Hello, all my Juki friends. Welcome back to another Live with Juki. My name is Alba, and I am the National Accounts Trainer. So I'd like to welcome you back to my home, and today we're going to be working on another fun, easy, quick project. And you may have guessed we're going to be making a bucket hat. And I absolutely love these. What a great, cute idea if your family is taking a vacation to have matching hats. The pattern that we will be using is a free download from Sweet Red Poppy. And what I love about this pattern, it is multiple sizes. It goes from adults to babies. So absolutely everyone in your family can have a hat from this one downloadable pattern. Now I've made a couple of changes to this wonderful pattern. And the changes are that I have interfaced every piece. So I have increased the amount of interfacing and I've used an interfacing that looks like a woven white piece of fabric. And when you do fuse this, one side is re very rough and bumpy. One side is smooth like a regular piece of cotton. You will be placing that bumpy side to the wrong side of the fabric. And I've done this on each of the pieces. Now, let me go over the pieces of the pattern. And the first one is the bucket hat top. And it says to cut two, but you will be needing one of a lining and one of your outer fabric. Now, the hat is reversible, so both of these fabrics can be worn. So it is cut two, but cut one of each fabric. The bucket hat middle is also cut four pieces, two of your lining and two of your fabric piece of your outer and the brim. Now, the brim is also cut four and two of lining and two of the regular fabric. And on my brim, the only thing I have done a little bit differently is I made my brim a little bit wider and I'm going to hold up one piece. So as you can see, I added about an inch to that brim because I really like to keep the sun off my face and I will be wearing mine at the beach. So um, that is the change that I've made. And what I will be doing is getting started on the machine. Now, the machine I am using today is the DX2000 QVP, but you could make this on whatever Juki machine is your favorite. I have set my stitch length to a length of 2.0, and I am using my standard foot and I'm using my stitch number three on this particular machine, my quarter inch piecing stitch. So it moves my needle over. And the reason I like to do quarter inch with the standard foot with, versus the quarter inch foot is this foot is a little bit wider and it allows me to use all seven of my feed dogs on this particular machine. So now we're gonna get started with construction. Now, as you see, all of my pieces are cut and pre-fused with the interfacing. And the first step that we want to work with is our bucket hat top. Now on this, I want to fold and mark my quarters. So I have marked my one half, I folded in half and marked my other half. Now I could crease this with an iron if I like, but I like to use my marking pen and mark my quarter marks 
on both my front and my lining pieces. You can add a pin to each one of these and line up your pins, but I find that my pins can move on me and I could lose that placement and wind up very frustrated when I make my hat. My next pieces that I am working with are the bucket hat middle piece. Now of my two remaining pieces, these are a little bit shorter and a little bit less curved. And you are going to notice that the top is a little bit smaller than the bottom. So pay attention to that. And I am going to place my pieces right sides to right sides. And I happen to be working with my lining piece. And I am going to sew a quarter of an inch on my short end. And I am going to my machine to do that. Now, if you'd like to pin those pieces, feel free. And let me just start by sewing one of those two ends. Now, I am using a heavy contrast thread so that you could see my seams and where I am stitching. But I would recommend using a coordinating thread. Now I am going to the opposite side and I'm lining up my fabric to the edge of the foot. And I'm going to sew that seam. And perfect. So now I have two seams sewn and I am going to open up this and I am going to match up my seams and I am going to crease on that inner side, that shorter side, that quarter marking. And I again am going to use my pen and mark that in place. Sometimes that crease line is very tough to see. Now at my iron, I am going to flatten and open up my seams just to eliminate some of the bulk. And I'm going to show you in one moment what I mean by that. So I'm just going to press that seam open. on both sides and I am going to get my top hat piece that matches my middle and I am going to match up my seam and my line and you can either pin or clip and I'm going to do this at all four markings that I placed. I find then when I mark this by using pins, as I'm handling my fabric pieces, sometimes that pin can move and I have to remark. So I just find that that pen mark helps me to get that all in place. Now you will see that that top of the hat and that side are going to come together and what we will do is sew a quarter of an inch all the way around and this is when having all seven feed dogs in play comes in really handy and as i am sewing i am gathering and putting my raw edges together because I am sewing a curve, it's almost like the fabric pieces seem like they're going in two directions and they kind of are. 
but just go a little bit at a time. You don't want to try and sew this all in one step. And as I approach those pins, I'm removing them. You never want to sew over pins. And I am sewing all the way around the top of my hat with that quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm using a stitch length of 2.0. Now, as I'm coming around and as I'm sewing this, I'm making sure that that lower fabric, I have the top of my hat up, does not get bunched up. And that's why I sew in shorter spurts. So as you're seeing, I'm checking that bottom fabric that it's laying flat, lining up my edges. Now you could make your hat very interesting by mixing and matching your fabrics and having a lining top and a different brim from your middle. It's your hat, so you want to do that whichever way you'd like. There's no right or wrong. And I'm coming back to my edge and I'm just making sure that I'm grabbing all of my fabric pieces and that they're laying nice and flat. And I'm going to overlap my stitching just a little bit. And I am going to back tack to reinforce that. And I'm using my scissor button. So what we have now is my top of the hat sewn to the middle. And I'm going to clip about every inch or so, making sure I don't cut into my threads. What this will do is when I turn this inside out, it will lay much nicer and give me a nicer curved edge. And I tend to do this right as I sew because if I wait for the next couple of steps, I might forget to do this and it makes a big difference in that hat. And I'm going to do that all the way around. As I turn this inside out, you will see how nicely that curve forms. And at this point, what I like to do is I'm going to give this a little press, pressing my seam towards the top of the hat. And I will also give this a quick top stitch. We're now at the point that I want to top stitch the top of my bucket hat. And the reason that I include this step is it keeps the seam in place at the top of the hat, which is really helpful as you're wearing it and also in washing. Now I like a nice visible top stitching and I like to do that with the triple stitch. On this particular machine, it's number nine, and it usually shows up on the sewing machine as three triple dashes, and I really like this stitch. I am going to elongate the stitch length to five,
and I want to move my needle position so that I am a quarter of an inch from my stitch line. So I am going to move my needle to 5.6, the same position it was in for quarter inch piecing. So now my ditch of the seam is lined up with my foot and I am going to slow down my machine and I am going to do this triple stitch all the way around my hat. And again, what I am doing is I am lining up that edge of the seam. I'm making sure that my seam is pressed towards the center. And you want to go all the way around the hat. And I just stop as I need to, to get into position. And I will go all the way around. I am going to show you how nice that triple seam is. It just gives you a bolder stitch when top stitching. Now we are done with the top of our hat. And the next piece that we will work with is the brim. So let me get those pieces. Now the brim is the really curved larger piece that we have. And again, I've interfaced all four of my pieces and we are going to place both the outer fabric and my lining fabric right sides together. And we are going to do the complete brim at this point. So right sides together, and I have my lining piece, and I have my outer fabric pieces all together. And I will be doing a quarter inch seam on both of those shorter edges for both pieces of fabric. And we will sew both the lining and that outer fabric because we are putting our brim together. I have one piece sewn and I'm going to go to that lining piece. Now I have both of my pieces sewn and I've gone ahead and opened up and pressed my seams open. Now what I will be doing is placing both my lining piece and my outer piece together. And when these go together, I will have that shorter, smaller inner circle and the outer circle. And I want to place a few pins matching up my seams so that I know my seams will match up. So I place my first of my pins at my seams. 
and at least one or two pins to keep my fabric together as I am sewing. And I will be sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance all around that outer edge. And I'm always removing my pins as I'm going. And we're sewing that outer wider edge. And I'm matching up my seams as I'm going. And I'm lining up my fabric to that outer edge of the foot. Now I've sewn all the way around with that with my seam allowance. And as you could see, just like we did on the top, I'm going through and just nicking about every inch, inch and a half or so. And you'd want to do that every time you have a curve seam. Now, my next step will be turning this inside out. And you will see that you could see both my lining and my finished fabric. And I'm going to go over to my iron and give this a quick press. And what I am doing is I am pressing towards my lining fabric because that is the darker of the two fabrics and I am just getting my seam nice and flat. And as I'm turning this inside out, I'm just finger massaging it so that it lays nice and flat and I'm along that edge. And I'm also going to give it another quick press. Now I've sewn my brim pieces together and ironed them flat. And I will be doing continuous lines of top stitching. And this is where I like to use that triple stitch again to a stitch length of five. And I've done one row. And I'm going to continue and do consecutive rows. And this just gives a really nice professional touch. Now, my needle position is in the middle, and I like that distance that it gives, but I can adjust my needle position to get my stitching further apart or closer together. I am using my previous sewn line and the edge of the foot as my guide, and I am going to sew continuous lines of this triple stitch. As you can see, I completed those consecutive lines of stitching, and I'm showing you that both on the lining side and on the top fabric side. And I really do like that triple stitch. It just accents really beautifully. And here I'm going to show you with just my regular stitch versus the triple just to show you that decorative finish difference. 
Now what we will be doing is attaching the brim to the hat top that we made. I want to make sure that when I am connecting my pieces, my fabric pieces are matching. And I'm matching up side seam, seam to seam, and I am going to pin. And I'm going to match up those seams first. And I want to make sure that I have my brim, as you could see, it can get really tricky. So I want to make sure that my brim is on the inside of my hat with the correct fabrics lined up together. And I'm matching up my side seams first. Now, with my hat, I am going to match up my seams and get my quarter point. And I'm going to do the same thing with the hat, matching up quarter point to quarter point and pinning all around. And as you're pinning, all of your excess fabric is on the inside of the hat. and add as many pins as you need to, to have this all lay together. Now I've pinned my brim to my lining piece, matching up the same fabrics, right sides to right sides. And I'm going to sew all the way around using my quarter inch seam. And I find it much easier if I place this with my hat towards my machine bed and my brim on the inside as I am sewing. And I will remove pins as I need to. And I constantly want to check that I am lining up my lower fabric, my hat, and my brim. And I'm trying to scrunch this down so that you see, and I'm actually gonna turn my machine a tiny bit so that you see I'm sewing inside that circle. And it actually makes it more difficult for filming, but much easier to sew. I'm making sure that I'm not pinching any of the fabrics and that I am keeping everything nice and flat and even along my edges. And I will sew this all the way around. As you're sewing, you may need to adjust your fabrics and just kind of move them together. And with my fingertips, I massage that fabric so that it is flat and I'm not getting any pinched fabric in my seam and that lays flat. and I'm sewing all the way around. I'm keeping my brim on the inside of my hat. If I have any other pins in there, I'm gonna make sure that those are removed. So here we have 
the brim connected to my lining piece and I made sure to match lining to lining. And now what I have is my outer fabric of the brim and the top and side piece of the hat that I have put together. I've also top stitched and I've gone ahead and marked my quarter points. So I matched up my two side seams, put a crease and marked. And I wanted to make sure that I could see my markings for the same quarter points on my hat portion that I've already constructed. Now, the trick is to leave the brim on the inside of the hat, placing right sides to right sides, matching up my fabric, and I am going to match up my seams. Now, remember when I said to open up your seams here, manage to get closed. But the reason I wanted those seams open is because I have multiple seams matching up at the same point. So that was really important. I'm going to match up my side seams on the other side. and I'm adding a pin, and I'm placing my pins far enough down where my pin head is not where I am sewing, so that in all of this, I do not have to worry about removing pins as well. So here I am matching up that quarter point, where I'm matching up that line, and again, I am going to place a pin far enough from the edge where I do not need to worry about it. And I am going to place four pins in here. I will be sewing practically all around. I want to reach a point where I'm going to leave an opening, not too large, but large enough for me to get my hand in there. So I am going to be leaving open it about five to six inches. And I don't want to do that directly at a side seam because that will become very obvious when I close it up. So when I start sewing, I start sewing prior to that side seam so that I do not leave my opening right at my side seams. And again, I'm working on the inside of the hat going around doing a quarter inch seam and my seam is right here. I'm starting just before it and I am going to do some back tacking because I will be pulling on that seam. And I'm also going to do a little back tacking at that side seam because that's going to get a lot of stress as I'm turning that inside out. And that one pin I knew I was going to sew over. And I'm massaging my fabric right in front of the foot so that I do not pinch that fabric. And I'm just sewing all the way around. And I'm sort of tugging a little bit at that under fabric to get both curves going in that same direction and laying flat. Stopping as I need to. There's a lot of layers of fabric that I want to make sure that I catch and that I'm getting nice and flat. Okay. 
and we're going practically all around. We want to leave that opening. Otherwise, we'll be wearing our hats inside out. And I'm coming to another side seam. I'm going to reinforce by that side seam a little bit. And I'm trying to fold that hat so you could see what I'm doing. And I'm now at the point, this is where I started. And I think I'm at a good point to leave my opening. I am back tacking to just reinforce that opening a little bit. And I am cutting my threads. I'm going to remove all of these pins so that I do not poke myself. But what I have now is my hat almost sewn. I have that one opening. And I am going to reach in and just pull everything out as gently as I can. And you kind of have to keep tugging at that brim until all of a sudden it just magically comes apart. And I am just tugging and getting that all lined up. And I'm going to go to the print side and I will see my opening. Now, all I'm going to do here is fold that fabric under just a little bit. And I could either with a hand sewing needle or with my sewing machine, give that a little top stitch. And I am going to do that with my sewing machine. And I'm just tugging on my fabric so that I can see where my fabric is. And I am actually going to do a top stitch all around my hat so that it doesn't look obvious where I've sewn that opening shut. So I am folding my fabric under about a quarter of an inch. And I am making sure that I'm overlapping my brim fabric by a quarter of an inch and I will sew all the way around right at the edge of that fabric. So I'm doing a nice little top stitch and now I'm coming to my opening. I started a little before my opening and every so often I'm going underneath my hat making sure that I am not catching anything I don't want to. And by stitching all the way around, it is not as obvious where that opening was for my hat. And again, I'm just massaging that fabric making sure everything lays nice and flat. And look at how easily we made this hat. We're practically done. And with all of the novelty fabrics that are around, you could really personalize this to just about any hobby, any season, to really make that specific for that person. And I'm just about done going all the way around. And at home, you might even want to give this a press before you top stitch 
just to keep everything laying nice and smooth. But just that quickly and easily, I have another bucket hat made. And I'm going to put that on and show that off to you. I absolutely love these bucket hats. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. I just want to say goodbye to all my Juki friends. Happy sewing, and I'll see you next time.